Machines and humans have worked together over generations and a very long time. But whereas previously they mainly provided muscle, the big changes now are increasing the capabilities of machines to augment our mental capabilities, to help us do things that were unimaginable before. And it's this move from muscle to brain power that's been facilitated by Moore's law, by the growth of machine intelligence, the exponential growth over the last 50 years or so, and this is predicted to continue. The financial crisis was a graphic demonstration of leaping technology and data deluge. Too much data, an inability to discern what was important. The best and most joined up systems exist in finance. The best people, certainly the most highly paid people, yet they were unable to prevent the crisis. So we need to ensure that the system has integrity, that we don't see it as bugged, but bugged in a big way, in a way that challenges our trust of it. Not only because the cyber system is corrupted, but also because we think that it's not trustworthy, that we cannot rely on handing over to machine intelligence, that we cannot allow it to come into our lives. We've seen how this has developed. Robots have taken a lot of human jobs, and we know that this will continue. One of our groups has estimated that perhaps 47% of, of existing jobs will be taken by machines. But in the same time, this creative destructive process has created whole swathes of new employment. Apps, the development of it, and the services industry, which now account for large parts of our economy. We do not necessarily see jobs taking away from full employment. We can imagine full employment with machine intelligence. But it's not going to happen by accident. It has to happen by design, by design of our institutions and, of course, education systems. The ability not only to do mass online education, but to ensure that we have the capabilities of reskilling so we don't get this generational divide with young people feeling comfortable with it and elderly people disconnected and increasingly left out and not trusting the system, unable to bank because they can't go online. We also need to understand, as in genome sequencing and other areas, how this will invade our every dimension of our lives. It can lead to huge improvements, and we see the ways that will happen. But there could be a health divide on this, those that don't have access to sequencing technology. So those that cannot be enhanced will fall farther behind. We can meet many other great challenges. The smart metering technologies, our interfaces on energy use, on the optimization around our homes could greatly reduce our carbon footprints. And there are many other areas of our lives where, augmented by machine intelligence, we would be able to do things much more effectively in a smarter way. We know that machines can be smarter than humans. Gary Kasparov, our friend, found this out in his challenge with Deep Blue. And that's now been surpassed in recent ex ex experiments where even greater levels with Jeopardy were surpassed. But machines can't do what humans can do. And my colleagues will demonstrate some of these things. We can't download our brains yet. We can't download wisdom, sensitivity, judgment, tenderness. These are things which we'll become even better at. So how do we hand over what we can and not allow machines to rule us, to make sure that they are our slaves, not the other way around? This relationship's crucial around the world. Health. And this is a slide of health workers sinking in a developing country in Africa. Requires not only the overcoming of the digital divide of the technologies, so there's wireless, but also the skills and the aptitudes. And this can happen in many, many other areas. It can lead, as we've seen, to leapfrogging. But we need to tell the machines what to do. We need to make sure we understand the capabilities and that the big brother state does not invade it before we understand it. So a much higher level of awareness is required, a much higher level of capability and trust and integrity in the system. Cyber systems, but also those that manage cyber systems. And you'll get some flavor of that. The question I'd like to discuss with the group is how do we achieve this interdependence, which is harmonious rather than destructive for society? Thank you.